In this video, I will show you the top 10 things to do in Rome, the capital of Italy and one of the most famous places on earth, some would call Rome a giant museum, so it's no surprise that the complete historic city centre is on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Watch till the end and I'll show you how to make the most of your trip here. And for more tips and travel content, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Number 1. The Spanish Steps Yes, Rome is in Italy, not Spain. But the Spanish Steps are one of the many tourist attractions in Rome and got their name after the Spanish Embassy moved onto the square where they're located in the 17th century. A prime spot for people watching and one of the best backdrops for snapping a picture in the city, the Spanish Steps have also been used in films, fashion shows and other important events. Its Italian name is Scalenata delle Trinità dei Monti and with 12 ramps and 135 traversin steps it is said to be the widest and longest staircase in Europe, welcoming millions of tourists and Romans who visit at all times of the day. So you can visit at any time for free, but something to know is that recent regulations made sitting or eating on the Spanish steps illegal in order to preserve them as they are classified as a monument in Rome. Another key monument and number two is Trevi Fountain. Considered as the most beautiful fountain in Rome, and for some even the world, it is also the largest in Rome, measuring at 20 meters in width by 26 meters in height. This is a must visit in Rome, and don't be surprised if you see people randomly throwing coins into the fountain. They're not vandalizing it, there's simply a myth that if you throw one coin, you will return to Rome, two coins, you will fall in love with an attractive Italian, and three coins, you will marry the person that you met. All of these are to be done with the right hand and over the left shoulder. That amounts to approximately 1 million euro in the fountain every year. Now you might think that's a lot of wasted money, but the good news is that since 2007 this money has been used to support good causes. Trevi Fountain can get extremely busy, so your best bets of admiring the fountain and getting a picture there are early in the morning or late at night. Now just a stone's throw or coins throw away is number 3, Pantheon. Known to have the biggest brick dome in the history of architecture, the Pantheon is perhaps the most imitated of all ancient works around the world and is Rome's best preserved building. It combines a Roman cylindrical structure with an outer colonnade of Greek inspiration and is a sight to be seen from both the outside and inside. The Pantheon is completely free to visit, but on weekends and public holidays, you'll just need to reserve your slot online at least a day in advance. Also, be sure to cover your shoulders and knees when visiting, and no flip-flops either. Number 4, and somewhere that you can wear flip-flops, is Villa Borghese Gardens. Rome's central park is a short distance from the earlier mentioned Spanish steps, and is the perfect place to get away from Rome's big crowds and relax with friends and family amongst the nature that this city has to offer. As well as various ponds, fountains and sculptures, the park is also home to Galleria Borghese, which holds one of the largest art collections in the world. Tickets for the gallery cost 20 euro for adults and 6 euro for children aged 6 to 17 years old. Number 5. Eat Italian food. Whether it's having a picnic in Villa Borghese Gardens or dining at a 5 star restaurant, one thing for sure is whilst in Rome, you need to indulge in some delicious Italian food. I particularly recommend trying some authentic Roman pizza at Casamanco or a beautiful carbonara at Mimo and Coco, which is right next to the famous two sizes where they have the best tiramisu in Rome. And after eating squares of Roman pizza to your heart's content, you should also make your way to Piazza Navona, perhaps the most famous square in Rome. With more beautiful fountains, countless cafes and street performers, Piazza Navona is a vibrant square in the centre of Rome that is full of history and another must visit in this great city. And make sure you watch to the end for a bonus attraction that is another must visit in Rome. Next up at number 7 and one of, if not the most visited place in Rome, is the Colosseum. This historic amphitheatre is seen as the icon of Rome and being at 7th on this list is very fitting considering on the 7th of July 2007 the Colosseum became one of the 7 wonders of the modern world. That's a lot of 7s. Dating back almost 2000 years ago the Colosseum was formerly known as the Flavian Amphitheatre and was inaugurated for entertainment purposes by the Emperor Titus with 100 days of games which included recreations of battles, gladiator fights and executions to an audience of 50,000 Romans. 
Regardless of this somewhat dark history, the Colosseum is a magnificent sight to see and it was definitely my favourite place I visited in Rome. Ticket prices vary with some discounts for European Union citizens and it's best to buy online rather than waiting in the long queues. Number 8. Altare della Patria Inaugurated in 1911 in tribute to Victor Emmanuel II, the Altare della Patria is an imposing monument located in Piazza Venezia. At 135 meters wide and 70 meters high along with its white marble exterior makes it a hard building to miss and the subject of thousands of pictures taken by tourists every day. One of the biggest attractions of the Altare della Patria is its panoramic terrace which provides stunning views of Rome. Tickets for the panoramic lifts cost €7 Euro for adults and €3.50 Euro for youths under 18 and seniors over 65. Number 9 is the Baths of Caracalla. Built in the 3rd century and named after Emperor Caracalla, the Baths of Caracalla was one of the largest buildings in Roman times together with the Colosseum and at the time held up to 2,500 people. It had hot and cold baths as well as massage rooms and even a library. Now, for 10 euro, you can explore the 11 hectares of ruins full of history that remain, spotting storytelling mosaics along the way. The Boffs also regularly host Italian operas in the open air during the summer months. Next up is Giannicolo. Considered by many as the 8th hill of Rome, in reference to the 7 hills, Giannicolo or Giannicolum Hill is the second tallest hill in Rome and is a peaceful and refreshing attraction close to the city centre. It became popular due to the important historical role it played in the defence of the city against French troops in 1849, but is now popular for the beautiful panoramic views of Rome, especially during sunset. At the top of the hill you can also spend time admiring Fontana dell'Acqua Paola, the Manfredi Lighthouse and the Church of San Pietro in Montorio, as well as the Garibaldi Monument, which recalls some of the events that took place during the French assault. Now for the bonus attraction I mentioned. You simply cannot go to Rome without visiting Vatican City. Considered its own country since February 1929, Vatican City is the smallest state in Europe and home to the Pope, who lives inside Vatican Palace. Key places to check out in Vatican City are St Peter's Square, St Peter's Basilica and the Vatican Museums, where you'll find the Sistine Chapel, one of the greatest treasures of the Vatican City and a masterpiece of Michelangelo. And that's the top 10 things that you can do in the historic city of Rome. Drop a comment below if you found this video useful or if there's anything else you think deserves a mention and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon like your life depends on it for more travel content.